degenerative joint disease in the spine OI in the spine, more common than in the limb the magnitude of the stresses and strains 23 intervertebral disc joint, 46 posterior facet joints the first structures to become affected by degenerative changes higher in the more mobile lordotic segments of the lumbar and cervical forms and function of the spinal joints intervertebral disc joints is for symphysis composed of nucleus pulposus annulus fibrosus hyaline cartilage and plates nucleus pulposus ball bearing it is more resilient than subchondral cancellous bone of the corpus posterior facet joints it is a diarthroidal or synovial type to guide steady and limit vertebral movement, composed of fibrous capsule, synovial membrane, and articular cartilage surface. Degenerative joint disease in the lumbar spine includes two interrelated conditions, degenerative disc disease and degenerative joint disease, both represent and exaggeration of the normal aging process and may be aggravated by injury, deformity, and pre-existing disease of the spine. It is estimated 80% of the adults once in their lives will suffer one or more episodes of back pain severe enough to stop them from working temporarily. The etiology is mechanical factors, weakness of trunk muscles from inadequate physical exercise, obesity, poor posture, and poor working habits. Chemical factors, it is three times greater in smokers. Specific injury, such as falls, motor vehicle accidents, sports injuries, lifting heavy objects without bending the knee, spondylolisthesis, infection, and neoplasm. The pathogenesis and pathology includes disc degeneration, segmental instability, segmental hyperextension, segmental narrowing, and herniation of the intervertebral wrists. The initial degeneration beginning in the early adult life, progressing slowly thereafter, characterized by gradual loss of chondroitin sulfate and water content, resultant loss of turgor and resilience, loss of actual height or thickness of the space, losses of fluid, in speciated, loses its homogeneous texture, become lumpy, and considered as normal limit in an individual older than 60 years old. With increasing age, the annulus fibrosis gradually loses of some of its elasticity. The posterior part becomes more easily separated or torn. Second side of weakness is the thin cartilage and plate. Schmoll's note. Protrusion in the spinal canal clinically is very significant. Segmental instability, the result of degenerative changes in the vertebral disc resulting in smooth motion in each involved segment is lost, therefore it is replaced by uneven and excessive motion. Reacts by forming traction spurs, aka osteophyte, becomes more susceptibility to injury. Segmental hyperextension Normally, extension of the lumbar spine is limited by anterior fibers of the annulus fibrosus and abdominal muscle. However, degenerative changes in the annulus fibrosus with flabbiness of the abdominal muscles and obesity result in persistent hyperextension of the lumbar spine through intervertebral joint. Result, OA in facet joints. There is a loss of article cartilage, hibernation of subchondral bone, formation of osteophytes, and resultant pain. Segmental narrowing, progressive narrowing of the intervertebral disc space, changes in the posterior facet joint and bulging of the annulus fibrosus, causes large osteophytes to develop, detectable radiographically in 90% of individuals older than 60 years old. The narrowed intervertebral joints has lost most of its motion relatively stiff and less pain. Herniation of the intervertebral disc is not synonymous with the degeneration of the disc, a specific event that occurs as a complication of disc degeneration. Most frequent in relatively young individuals, particularly males, the nucleus pulposus is insensitive. The herniated portion becomes dehydrated and firm.
spinal stenosis, bony narrowing either centrally or lateral recesses, central cauda equina is compressed, lateral nerve roots and their blood supply. Collective term equals to bony nerve root entrapment syndromes, may be congenital or acquired to advance this degeneration, segmental narrowing, subluxation of the posterior facet joints, or even secondary of previous spinal fusion. Clinical features and diagnosis of various syndromes in the lumbar spine are best described to each phases of its pathogenesis as they are caused by secondary effects of this degeneration. Segmental instability, chronic and intermittent backache, aggravated by excessive activity and relief by rest. The A, deep, felt locally over the unstable in segment or may be referred to the buttocks. We find protective muscle spasm in the lumbar region. Radiograph, there is a flexion and extension, segmental instability or hypermobility, and traction spurs. Segmental hyperextension, there is a chronic and intermittent low back pain, felt locally may be referred to the buttocks and occasionally to the back of the thigh. Aggravated by any activity that involves active extension of the lumbar spine. An example, lifting object from the floor and spine in a flex position. Painful episode, protective muscle spasm in the lumbar region. Radiograph in standing position, posterior subluxation of the posterior facet joints. Segmental narrowing, permanent narrowing represent light stage, usually beyond middle age. Loss of normal mobility in the lumbar spine. In radiograph, we can find spinal ostified and narrowing of the involved disc space. Herniation of the intervertebral disc. When the nucleus pulposa suddenly herniates, it produces dramatic symptoms, most common during early adult life and middle age. The usual, few days after some excessive activity or mild injury, sudden onset of severe agonizing low back pain during sneezing, coughing, twisting, reaching, or stooping. After a short time, there is a severe pain radiating down one lower limb, superimposed. Physical exam, there is a muscle spasm in the lumbar region, loss of normal lordosis, stand with the trial shifted to one side, active flexion and extension are significantly restricted. Impaired nerve root conduction, evidenced by decreased skin sensation and muscle weakness in the distribution of the involved nerve root. In radiograph, does help to exclude other causes of low back pain and sciatica. Spinal stenosis, the central type compressed cauda equina, there is a diffuse back pain. Lateral type, there is a compressed nerve root, there is a radicular pain. The characteristic pain is more like intermittent claudication, caused in part by nerve root ischemia. It is likely to be brought on by walking. Past described by CT. Differential diagnosis of low back pain, the most common symptom related to the musculoskeletal symptoms. Magnet Classification, there is a physiogenic, fasciogenic, neurogenic, spondylogenic, and psychogenic. Treatment of OA in the lumbar spine, there is no specific cure for this disorder in the spine. The aim is to alleviate pain to help the patient understand the nature of the disease, to provide psychological support, to strengthen weak trunk muscles, to improve function, and to rehabilitate the individual patient. Methods of treatment, there is a psychological consideration, therapeutic drugs, bed rest, orthopedic apparatus and appliances, physical therapy, spinal manipulation, chemonucleolysis, surgical operation, and rehabilitation. Psychological consideration, the patient needs to be reassured that the condition is just an exaggeration of the normal aging process, with non-operative treatment 90% relief of their pain within 6 weeks. No organic cause can be readily detected in a large percentage of patients with LBP in the therapeutic drugs, strong analgesics over a relative short period, in example using NSAIDs. Bad rest. Some degree help by adequate local rest of the spine should be kept as short as possible, even as short as two days. Firm mattress supported by rigid boards. And if there is a sciatic pain or elastic not improved, may require surgical treatment. Orthopedic apparatus and appliances. 
such as temporary spinal support in example body jacket, canvas jacket, surgical corset, metal bar, metal back brace, and maintain the lumbar in the flexion. Physical therapy such as local heat and strengthen spinal and abdominal muscles. Spinal manipulation may be controversial but gradually become more widely accepted. It is designed to stretch the capsules of the posterior joints only for acute cases. It is contraindicated when obviously has herniated disease. Chemonucleolysis, the enzymatic dissolution of the nucleus proposed by chymopapain, somewhat controversial, less used today. Surgical operation for 10% of cases. 90% of patients heal without surgical operation, unless has cauda equina syndrome. Laminectomy is, it is indicated in cauda equina syndrome, persistent and variable pain, not really by strong analgesic, persistence of severe pain, evidence of persistent nerve root irritation after three weeks of bad rest, evidence of progression of neurological changes, recurrent incapacitating back pain, and spinal canal stenosis with cloudy canal like pain. Surgical operations such as diacectomy and spinal fusion. Rehabilitation 5% will remain severely disabled despite extensive treatment. Need effective facilities for retraining and development for more opportunities for gainful light work. Cervical spinulosis. Definition Degenerative disease of the cervical spine, including degenerative disc disease, degenerative joint disease. Basically, the same as degenerative joint disease in lumbar spine. There is an initial degeneration in the nucleus pulposus, and then there is segmental instability, segmental narrowing, subsequent development of degenerative joint disease in the posterior facet joints, and herniation of the intervertebral disc. The most common segment is C5 to 6 and C6 to 7. Cervical spine. There is a little room in foramina, subluxation as the fire radially compressed the nerve roots, particularly after injury. Herniation of the intervertebral disc, much less common than in tumor. Posterior lateral compressed nerve root, central spinal cord. Clinical features and diagnosis. More than 60 years old, radiographic evidence of DDD and degenerative joint disease in the cervical spine. Mostly no symptoms, only mild stiffness in the neck. In severe cases, fat, neck pain, pain referred to the shoulder or arms. Cervical root irritation involves enroachment of the osteophytes in the foramina and also in the vertebral disc herniation. Insidious onset after injury, acute onset. Compression at the sixth cervical nerve, weakness of deltoid and biceps, lower biceps reflex, lower skin sensation in the thumb and index. Compression at the seventh cervical nerve, Weakness of the triceps, less triceps reflex, less skin sensation in the index and needle. Spinal cord compression, it is distinct, indistinguishable from spinal cord neoplasm. The neck, limitation of motion, especially lateral flexion, may be crepitus. Complete neurological examination of the upper limb is always needed. Radiographic, this space narrowing of the, and the osteophyte formation. Differential diagnosis of neck and arm pain, magna, physiogenic, pharynx, larynx, upper trachea, esophagus, phacelogenic, angina pectoris and MI, neurogenic, spinal cord neoplasm, pancreas tumor, spondylogenic, osseous lesions, soft tissue lesions, psychogenic, neurotic. Always search for underlying organic basis. Treatment, local rest of the neck. Intermittent traction through halter, majority non-operative, as for disease persistent pain, laminectomy and disectomy, only indicated for central herniation. Neuropathic joint disease or Carcot's joint. Carcot's joint is, is relatively uncommon, characterized by severe and rapidly progressive destruction of one or more joints. Incidence. Any extensive disease or injury of the sensory element, the most common is syphilitic tapes dorsalis. Only small percentage develop carcass joint, diabetic neuropathy, syringomelia, and less common paraplegia, leprosy, congenital indifference of pain. 
Pathogenesis and pathology, probably precipitated by an injury. The pathological process resembles severe or traumatic arthritis, but relentlessly progressive and destroyed. There is an article where cartilage is destroyed, subchondral bone is absorbed in some areas and deposited excessively in others. Fragments of bone and cartilage break off and become loose body. Fibrous capsules and ligaments stretch by massive synovial effusion. Eventually, the joint becomes unstable. Clinical features and diagnosis It is usually over 40 years old, progressive swelling and instability of the involved joint. In a physical examination, there is a gross swelling of the joint and remarkably increased passive ROM. In neurological exam, there is an underlying neurological disorder. Joint aspiration, large amount of spinophile fluid may contain blood. Radiograph, irregular area of rarefaction and sclerosis. Loose bodies in the joint, subluxation, even dislocation. The entire joint is completely disorganized and destroyed. Treatment Due to massive and persistent effusion that stretches capsule and ligament may lead to joint instability, repeated inspiration is needed. Intraarticular injection or of radioactive colloidal gold weight relieving brace crutches, surgical arthritis is difficult. Arthroplasty is doomed to failure. Non articular rheumatism. Myofascial pain syndrome, aka fibromyalgia syndrome. Clinical feature the pain in the region of various muscles and their facial attachment to the bone, most commonly in the neck and back. Chronic and recurrent does not confine to one muscle group. Hypersensitive to direct pressure and squeezing. Pain may be felt locally but more often referred to type. Aggravated by emotional tension, immobility, activity, and local heat. This star sleep pattern non REM sleep. Joint stiffness, psychogenic aspect, the pain tend to be aggravated by rather exclusion of other more serious musculoskeletal pain. Treatment is challenging, curious combination of psychological and somatic manifestations. Reassurance are most helpful, the pain is related to tension, both emotional and muscular. Local heat message, mild analgesics if necessary, local injection of hydrocortisone in a local anesthetic agent. NSAIDs usually not effective. Advice concerning a more appropriate lifestyle with less tension and more equanimity. Degenerative tendon and capsule disease. It is a weight-bearing joints that involve degenerative joint disease, non-weight-bearing joints, degenerative periarticular disease. Incidence and etiology, particularly shoulders, it is much more prone. Older than 40 years old, many causative factors are support in this in the progressive changes of normal aging process. Aging, the blood supply of tendons and joint capsule become less adequate, decrease the efficient of nutrients, and therefore resulting in the local degenerative changes. Pathogenesis and pathology, the basic is local necrosis of tendon and joint capsule. Subsequently, the areas of necrosis become calcified, resulting in chemical and physical inflammation. Local degeneration, there is a pathological tear or rupture. Degenerative tendon and capsule disease in the shoulder. Joints in the shoulder, there are glenohumeral, acromyoclavicular, sternoclavicular, scapula, and thorax. Smooth motion of the acromion is due to subdeltoid bursa, rotator cuff, subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. The degenerative disease usually most marked in the supraspinatus portion due to the less adequate blood supply, most vulnerable to pressure. Shoulder pain is a common symptom, not always manifestation of intrinsic shoulder disease. Calcific supraspinatus tenditis. Dystrophic calcification is more common, 30% of adults causing no symptoms. If symptoms do arise, may be acute or chronic. Acute calcific supraspinatus tenditis. Repeat the position of the calcium in the close increased local pressure, excruciating pain, throbbing, not relieved by rest. Deposit is equal to chemical boil, irritates the undersurface of the subacromial bursa. When the calcium deposit bursts in the subacromial bursa, there is a good blood supply, the calcium is gradually absorbed, the symptoms subside. Clinical picture, male, middle age, or older, previously experienced shoulder pain after excessive use of shoulder. 
radiograph deposits of calcium in the region of muscotaninous calf close to insertion into the humerus. Acute calcific supraspinatus tendinitis treatment depend on the severity and duration of the acute episode, local rest with arm sling and analgesics and steroids if doesn't response aspiration with local injection of hydrocortisone. Last resort, surgical removal of calcium deposit. After acute symptoms have subsided, exercise prevent prolonged stiffness of the shoulder. Chronic calcific supraspinatus tendinitis. The deposit may be sufficiently large, causes symptoms. The patient experiences chronic pain annoying during the day and would sleep at night. In physical examination, there is a local tenderness. Just lateral to the acromion, painful arc syndrome positive impingement test. Treatment and states local injection of corticosteroid. Terrors of the musculotendinous cough, pre-existing aging with deficient blood supply and superimposed injury resulting in tear, middle age and beyond usually in male. Partial tear, supraspinatus component, abduction but with pain, painful arc syndrome, injection of local anesthetic, treatment with active exercise, steroid injection, occasionally division of coracoacromial ligament and acromioplasty. In complete tear, it is due to injury, an example, fall on the shoulder, however 50% without significant injury. Pain more severe at night, over 60 cannot active abduction of the arm if passively abducted 90 degree able to hold it. Radiograph, USG, MRI, arthroscopy. Treatment, simple exercise, surgical repair is unsatisfactory. Pisipital tendinitis and tenosynovitis. Degenerative changes in the tendon of the long head of the biceps with chronic inflammation of its sinophilus sheath, resulting in shoulder pain. Females, the pain felt anteriorly aggravated by active supination of the forearm against resistance with elbow flex and without shoulder moving. No radiograph changes, treatment with local rest with arm sling with NSAIDs may require local injection hydrocortisone. Adhesive capsulitis of the shoulder or frozen shoulder. Variety of the disorders not only intrinsic but also extrinsic, mainly to the development of diffuse capsulitis of the glenohumeral joint. There is an inflamed capsule becomes adherent to the humeral head and undergoes contracture, prevent motion of shoulder, resulting in frozen neutral position. Particularly happen in older person. Intrinsic disorder, calcific supraspinatus tendinitis, partial tear of the musculotendinous cuff, and bicepital tendinitis. Extrinsic disorder, those that cause pain in the region of the shoulder, therefore cause the patient to keep the shoulder still. Frozen shoulder, the onset is usually gradual, inflammatory phase, shoulder pain, muscle spasm in all the muscle about the shoulder. After few weeks, the inflammation becomes so acute, the shoulder becomes frozen and the acute pain subsides. Additional strain to acromyoclavicular joint resulting in pain radiates approximately from shoulder to E. Radiograph Arthrography, decreased volume of the shoulder joint, prognosis quite good, self-limiting, paw in 12 to 24 months, treatment when painful, local rest with arm sling, local heat, analgesics, inflation of glenohumeral joint with saline injected, sometimes successful. In a later stage, if motion is not returning, surgical release of the contracture may need it. Shoulder hand syndrome. 
poorly understood reflex sympathetic dystrophy. It can be initiated by any disorder, either intrinsic or extrinsic. In over 50, especially who have low pain threshold, disabling pain in the shoulder and hand, with local neurovascular disturbances, moisture and high breast, thesia of the skin, atrophy of subcutaneous tissues, chronic edema, disease, osteoporosis, painful limb, fear to use it, absence of muscle action, edema, more pain with joint mission, vicious cycle, treatment with psychological analgesic systemic corticosteroid, local heat, and active exercise. Degenerative tendon disease in the elbow, degenerate, subsequent local necrosis, dystrophic calcification, and pathological rupture, tennis elbow, lateral epicondylitis, thought to be premature degeneration in a flat tendinous origin of the forearm extensor muscle, repetitive overuse, pain over the lateral aspect of elbow, and radiograph may reveal dystrophic calcification in the area of degeneration in extensor muscle origin. Treatment, local rest, heat, and sates, injection of hydrocortisone with anesthetic agent, board, board snack band around proximal forearm, if fail, may necessarily to immobile the wrist with cast for several weeks, or even operative, division of facial attachment of the extensor muscle to the lateral epicondyle epicondylectomy. Golders elbow, similar to tennis elbow, including symptoms and treatment. Degenerative tendon disease in the wrist and hand, associated with thickening of the fibrous sheath of the tendon with resultant narrowing of the tunnel. The two most common disorder is the quervine tenophagenitis tenosans and the genital tenophagenitis tenosans, aka trigger finger. The quervine tenophagenitis tenosans, lower end of the radius, the tendon of APL and EPB share common fiber sheath, excessive friction by typing, gripping objects, wearing clothes. Most, more frequently in women, characterized by wrist pain, radius approximately up the forearm, distally toward thumb. Local tenderness of radial styloid, forceful passive ulnar deviation will produce pain. Treatment, local injection of hydrocortisone, immobilization of the thumb for 6 weeks, if not effective, operative. Digital tenophagenitis tenosans or trigger finger. In the palm, profundus and superficial flexor tendons are enclosed by common fibrous sheath. Excessive thickening of the sheath. Middle aged woman unable to actively extend the infold finger only passively with snapping motion. No odular enlargement can be palpated just proximal at the base of the finger. Treatment is immobilization in the extension, injection of hydrocortisone, and division of fibrous sheath. The Puy trans contracture of the palmar fascia, progressive fibrous tissue contracture of the palmar fascia of the ulnar side of the hand. It is not common in men over 50. Unknown cause, not understood pathogenesis. Irregularly bilateral, even plantar fascia of the feet. The initial manifestation is the nodular weakening of the palmar fascia adherent to overlying skin. Treatment, surgical excision, and of all the abnormal palmar fascia, postoperatively with CPM. Thin walled cystic sinophil line lesion containing thick clear mucinous fluid. Unknown origin as arises in relation to part periarticular tissue, joint capsules, tendon sheath, limited to the hands and feet, local discomfort, galleon on the palmar, palmar head, compression of median or ulnar nerve, tends to regress spontaneously over a long period of time. Treatment excision. Aspiration often recur. Popliteal kist, somewhat similar to ganglion, developed in popliteal region, usually in relation with semimembranous bursa, common in childhood, adult, secondary to disease in the knee, joint, sinophial hernia. Treatment if sufficiently enlarged and interfere, knee function, excision. Meniscal kist, a fluid filled kist of a meniscus. Childhood, tender swelling at the joint line, more often lateral meniscus, if cause symptoms, excision. Bursitis, line with synovium and synovial 
fluid containing sacs that exist normally at sites of friction between tendon and bone, repeated excessive friction, friction bursitis, the most common bursitis at the prominence of the first metatarsal a head, aka bunion. Degenerative changes and calcification in a subjacent tendon may irritate the bursa, chemical bursitis, an example, subacromial bursitis secondary to calcific supraspinatus tendinitis or to faceous gout. Infection treatment treat the underlying cause, however, if too large excision.